welcome to my next production of The Big Top. This is a free flow scare attraction that is designed to be scary. Will you survive the carnival or will you become the next Figueroa Brothers victim? Hi, my name's Steph, um, Steph Ricketts. I've been working at the park uh, since 2011. I started off as an actor, um, but my current role is the entertainment experience manager. So Big Top 2015, I would describe it as a carnival that's rolled up at Thorpe Park Fright Nights. A group of carny folk who want to bring their twisted circus to Thorpe Park, allow you to see actually what goes on inside the Big Top and the horrors that happen inside to the cast members. So it looks all glamorous on the outside and a, you know, a showbiz lifestyle, but actually inside it's really gruesome. So the Big Top characters were the ones being tortured. So anything that we do with Fright Nights, we look at our lineup, we look at the peaks and troughs and what do we bring. And something that we didn't have in 2015 was a clown maze or anything circus themed. We had a lot of gore, a lot of hospital themed, um, attractions in the past and we never really had anything fun, twisted and anything that wasn't covered in blood really. So this was our spin on actually people do get scared of clowns. We had seen success with clowns in Cabin in the Woods. Everyone came out terrified of the clowns so we kind of took that. Um, we had an audience that said that that scared them and then we looked at well how can we develop that? Do we have a gap in our in our lineup that actually we can fulfill that a lot a lot more. We did things such as have an amazing promo. It really hit the nail on the head. Everyone was really excited about it. <laughs> but what we found was, was that we put out that these were the Figaro bros and we never had those characters inside the attraction. We never had us playing those characters. So we're putting out to the world that these are the Figaro bros, come and see them. And then nobody recognized the Figaro bros when you went around the attraction because it wasn't what you were advertising as. So something that I took from that is that when we cast and when we do our photo shoots and our video pieces, is that you will never say, this is this character. We'll never say, you will see this person in the maze. We just do a general vibe and a general kind of snapshot of what you're gonna get. Um, so things like that we learnt from. The beach was chosen for the location because it's quite a big space. We had had maze previously on there, so The Curse and Seven in 2010 and 2011 was there. The marketing team and the high management team really wanted this spectacle as you walked across the bridge and came out from the dome that you could see the Big Top and everyone knew that the Big Top was there and you could hear it for um, a long distance wherever you are on park. And the idea was that you had three tents as well, three marquees. So it just covered a lot of space. There's always challenges with putting something on the beach. So we weren't allowed to actually start building until early September, which only gives us a, a month, a couple of weeks to build. The challenges that come with the beach are draining it, making sure it's safe to start building on and making sure it's levitated because the ground is never level over there. So that is a layer of construction that you need to put on first. And then you have to put on the, the, the marquees and the tents. And then you have to go in and do your scenic and then you have to do your set dressing and the rehearsals in there. So in terms of construction, I know that time was a massive challenge, there, there always is, um, with, with building something in a space that's been previously used. And I'd say that was the biggest challenge that we had, um, which then leads into your operational time, because you then can't get in and do rehearsals as much as you want to. We wish we could test it more thoroughly before we open, um, but on this occasion we were struck for time just due to the turnover time. Uh, the reviews were mixed. We just came up big top and it was not good at all. It was a lot more hyped than what it actually was. Out of, out of 10. If, if not a little less, really. It was very much overhyped. We've just come out of the big top. I don't think it's a very strong maze. Some of the sets in there aren't great, especially when we did the fun house last night at Screamland. Um, it wasn't amazing. All right, we've done the big top. If I'm openly honest, I thought the one phase on Thursday were a bit better. It was okay. The ending was good. Our challenges were throughputs and queue, and that it was meant to be an immersive walk round. So you came out of the first tent, you were then supposed to see the carny uh, stalls and the 
uh, the play zone area and the, where you throw tin cans and the really interactive pieces and the Zoltar box that you want people to stop and look at, which was the creative point of view, we then realised that we were having to ask people to go through a lot quicker because we had a massive queue. So I'd say the biggest challenge is, is creative versus the throughput, which is massive really it can have such an impact on guests if the queue's not if the queue's not going and something that we find with new attractions is that by the time you find out your snagging list and you find out what works what doesn't fright nights is finishing say okay well we can't do that now but for next year we'll think of this and for next year we'll think of that and something that we had with 2015's big top was that when it rained that year the water would just collect and it just caused a lot of uh, trouble so we did things to make sure that it was, you know, it, it wasn't as a challenge. So we used the hay bales to soak up a lot of the rain and we, we just covered it everywhere. But then that equally meant that we had such a massive pack down and it took us months and months to clean the beach. And obviously rides needed the beach back in terms of sorting it out for the next season. And I have memories of standing on the beach with a jet wash for about two weeks, just, just washing away the big top. I, at that point, at the end of 2015, thought it was gonna come back on the beach in 2016. Looking back at it now, at the time, yes, we all had frustrations with it and I definitely know that the performance team uh, worked their hardest in there to make it work with the challenges that we have and I applaud them for that. And creatively, it gave us a lot of uh, info to what do we need to do to make it, um, I wouldn't say better, but to, to change it really, to hit what we need to hit with this attraction. I think the entire team took a lot of learnings from Big Top 2015. The conversation to bring Big Top back started off with Johnny Burns, who had just joined us as technical services manager. He hadn't been there in 2015, and his desk was opposite mine, and he came up to me and he went, so, um, Steph, Big Top, uh, what needs changing? And I said, how long have you got today? <laughs> My name's Johnny Burns, and I was the show services technical manager at Full Park. I'm Dan West, and I was technical coordinator in show services at Full Park. So I came to Thought Park in 2015 um, to have a look around and sort of, I was doing a little bit of video work at the time and I was, I was lucky enough to go through Big Top in its 2015 um, guise. And I was, I was impressed at the front of the outside. You know, it, looked, it was a big showpiece. It looked really exciting and it, there, was, there was definite kind of atmosphere around it. And then when I got inside, that's when I was, very disappointed. So I'm Jay Brace and I was a senior construction manager uh, at Full Park for 2016 and 17. Mm. Hello, I am Ollie. I used to work as a scenic tech under Jay. Uh, I started in 2015. I worked on the original brick top with Scruffy Dog. Um, I then started working with Jay and the new team under Johnny Burns to sort of rejuvenate Big Top. When I started in 2016, um, it was quite quickly told to me that Big Top was coming back and it needed to be um, it needed to be improved upon from last year, should we say. So it, it was it was returning, it was going to be one of our mazes. So we just sat down and I said, this is what worked really well. We could enhance this. We basically took it and went, well, what can we what can we do with all this stuff that we've got? Let's forget the layout of last year. Let's forget everything that was, was in previously. Obviously Thorpe were, at the time, they were just about to open or had tried to open Darren Brown's Ghost Train. So there was a, an awful lot of um, emphasis and focus on getting that attraction open. And we knew that Fright Nights was this enormous event at the end of the year. It was kind of the big thing that is almost a staple of, of the, the season. And yet, because there was so much focus on Darren, it was almost like, you know, people were obviously checking and making sure we were okay, but it was very much, look, you just, you just need to get this done, you just deliver this. We're busy with that, and you get on with it. You yeah. crack on with this, exactly. And yeah, and then Johnny went away with his team and Dan and the scenic guys and just came up with a plan. The good thing that we were given was a new space. So obviously 2015, Big Tom's on the beach. Everyone knows how that went. And um, so the, the, the big thing for 2016, this had all kind of been arranged even before we stepped into our roles, was, um, you know, big tent on the crust area, mm. um, you know, big solid area. There's no issue with the beach and flooding and straw and everything that came with 2015. So we knew that we had, yeah, like Dan said, a decent foundation. We had a big tent, we had a decent floor. So, you know, what can go wrong, basically? Yeah. When we started in 2016, we were just given a, a, just a PDF with a layout of uh, just some lines on yeah. it. And we were like, there's a prop room, what's in the props? Yeah. Uh, no ideas. Because we had to start from scratch, we didn't want to go too far, so then for it to fail, so it just went really basic. I think when you think back through Friday Night's history, simplicity has always been what's been the most sort of powerful, really. We came in as theme park fans and we had been to Friday Night's before, mm -hmm. we'd seen a lot of these mazes. 
we'd seen what Universal were doing at Halloween Horror Nights. We, we kind of knew the industry. So we knew really that we wanted to build something that was, you know, amazing for the general public, but also amazing for people like us who are theme park fans. So um, we knew from the off that, you know, going right back to the roots of Thor Park's Fright Nights, which had been so successful for so long, you know, thinking back to the asylum where it was literally chain link fence, strobes, and just a maze park. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's it. You know, that is the fundamental um, basis to a decent maze. And we said, let's let's start with that. Started off as let's build the walls, let's frame out the space. We, we built so many flats, didn't we? They were yeah, just piling up and piling up. We knew we wanted to take the scaffold that had been used from the previous year, and that literally instantly to us said, "Let's build a you know a asylum style chain link fence." Maze, yeah. So that was that was obvious, wasn't it? So um, we knew that that was kind of going to take up an enormous part of the tent, and then the flats would kind of take up the second part. So it was from that perspective, it was quite a simple build. Yeah, because the layout just, was very simple. Yeah, yeah, it was just a theme in that didn't have any thought put into it when we started. So this is the big top so far. Here we are. Ah, oh, one giant space. It was really me and Jay yeah. that went room by room. And we had a couple of other teams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dragging stuff yeah. out on the back yeah, of the gate. Trying to find whatever we could. <laughs> yeah. um, 2016 ended up with uh, you know, a, re a complete redo on all the props and everything. It was, I think, a couple of uh, the Scruffy Dog props, the, the Clown's Head, Mephisto, that sort of stayed in. Like celebrity, I'm a celebrity props. Yeah. <laughs> we nick some of them. Yeah. There wasn't much from 2015 that was carried over other than the name signage and some, some set pieces really. Yeah. So moving that into the 2016 Big Top, which was you know a completely different maze, yeah. really. I think that, that that was the thing that we all knew. We all knew going from 2015 to the 2016 that the, the essence of the Big Top had to change rather than it didn't really matter what um, mm. Uh, we built it more it was that change of perception from either being this you know dark horror maze to this very light silly fun horror maze that it became in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Newbies coming in and knowing what we what <laughs> what the standard was from the year before what we had to deliver we just said no this this maze needs to be the talking point for this year yeah so these key points in it yeah precisely. and audio was one of them audio was huge yeah. and we had obviously Thorpe had just recently worked with Ima score on Darren Brown's Ghost Train Ima Score had obviously been working with Merlin on a few different projects. So we reached out and said, we're building a Fright Night's Maze. Uh, it's circus themed. What do you think? One of my favorite songs at the time was I'm an Albatross, which has the really heavy bass line in it, but it goes um, dun, 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 dun. It has a really happy uh, beat in the background, but quite an intense um, uh, song. Cause I'm an Albatross. <laughs> So I spoke to Johnny about it. I said, look, I need you to listen to this clip for about 10 seconds. That's how I imagine the soundtrack to be. I want everything to be really happy, but everything to be sadistic at the same time. I want the juxtaposition. We had said we wanted something that was almost Smiler-esque, because obviously Ima had, had written um, the, the, the Smiler score, mixed with the almost like Aaron Chupar kind of Euro dance style, sort of thumping dance music, basically. It was much, just yeah. really, yeah, bouncy and just a bit manic. So um, I'm a school went amazing, like we, yeah, absolutely. And we got sent this first demo, and we were literally <laughs> we were like round the computer, ready to listen to it, and we had a listen, and it was it was good, it was good, but it, it wasn't is. right. So we went back, and this is what's great about working with I'm a school and not pulling stuff off of YouTube that you can't then change, is that we said we love it, but make it faster. Yep. Make it dancier. No, dancier. <laughs> that was it, yeah. Dancier and something you can go, yeah, I remember this. Exactly. Yeah. I remember when we first tested it, it was late at night and yeah, we we'd, we'd, we'd put the sound system in and we kind of put the tracks into the player and we hit play. And the whole tent just came alive, didn't it? Yeah, and you could, I mean, you could hear it across the lake. Yeah. But, it was um, like midnight, I think. <laughs> it was. Going for it. <laughs> but I think from that point, we knew that this was going to be something special. So this was the first time the guys got dressed up in the costume and they went into the attraction and I said to Johnny, can you turn the music on? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll turn the music on. And you could hear the music for miles. Like you could hear the music by the bridge. You just, everyone heard it and everyone was getting changed and saw alive because that's where our costumes were stored at the time. And everyone was like, what, this, this is sick. Is this the music? I was like, yeah, guys, this is the music. Obviously I've heard it about a thousand times at this point, but they were so pumped. It was like the maze was opening. They ran in there um, and we took photos of them 
in their rooms, but it was just this big buzz of excitement underneath. What are you doing, mate? What am I doing? I am wiring uh, some plugs onto lights, uh, ready to go to Big Top. There you go. Right, we're going to have a look. We uh, had a lot of support that year as well in 2016, so we had a lot of actors who were in for shifts and where sometimes uh, other attractions were closed throughout the year, they would come in for their shifts regardless and we'd get them to paint base layers of the big top. So it was a giant team effort. The entire ENTS team was psyched about this maze. They then went away and made it work and would take me around on a little tour and then I'd like be a little fan, like walking around like, oh, this is great. Hi, John, hi, Amber. Hello. Hello. You guys want to show me around? Yes. Wow. Right, show me around the big top. So this is the new and improved Madame Mephisto room. Oh okay, oh we're actually in the room. Yes, this yes. is the room. This is the beginning. Cool. Yes, and then into the cloud corridor. Ooh, wow, look at this, this is cool. So you'll be chased down here, and then you'll see strobes. And you come into here. This is the new asylum. Ah, wow, look at that. Oh my god. That's gonna be mental to get through. 3.0. Asylum 3.0. <laughs> it is like a genuine. All it literally is like a End of the Strobe maze. We go into a little changeover. And oh no, actors. No! <laughs> Actor corridor. Actors corridor, that's cool. So they get their own corridor to get out. Yes, it's a bit like Saul. Yeah. So it's going to go everywhere. That's really From cool. just one big corridor. Cool. And then here, this is this is the dressing, dressing room? room. Yeah. Okay, cool. Dressing room. So it's pink and purple. Cool. But there'll be loads of tires everywhere as well, like hanging rails. And pink will be animal cage. Ah, oh, yeah. This is cool. This is how I imagined it when I explained it. Is it like, is it all like on? Is it yeah. actually, it's like really extreme. You used to jump up. And then, and then you used to swing down again. Ah. <laughs> Scare actor. Less Scare actor. 101. Hey. <laughs> so, yes, that is the animal cage. And then you go down here. Into the cl another clown corridor. Yeah. Another clown corridor. And into the Biffa Bash room. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many of them. They sound colony. What will be the props room? Oh, okay, cool. What are you blocked off? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, we're going to have the bit here so the actor can stand. Run out. No, I'm going to come out that way. Cool. Sick. Now, is the big top. And then when the attraction opened and when we had our staff press press preview and everyone went to the big top and everyone came out like, oh my God, that was sick. So we just come out of the big top and it was really, really good. They made some really nice improvements to that this year. So of course they've moved it from where Zodiac, uh, next to Zodiac, sorry, from the beach. Uh, and just works so much better there. It's in a big building. So we have just come out of the big top. That was really good, really good. It's a lot better than last year in my opinion. Really well spaced out this year. We've just gone on the uh, five out of five scare rating. That was so good. <laughs> How can you be such a tart about that? that I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was myself at first. I'm no, not even scared of clowns. Any... That's one of the best mazes I've ever done. The strobe lights in there were so disorientating. Paul Lucas here had to pull me, had to pull me away. Really, really good. Yeah, best maze here, definitely. I remember feeling quite proud because I think we'd, we both were sort of looking through the forums and things to see what what people were saying. Yeah. And I think yeah, the general consensus was massive improvement on the year before. Yeah, once we'd opened and um, we'd we'd got the first few sort of groups coming through it and starting to see the reviews. Uh, it was really great for us, it was a real motivator for us to yeah. say actually people are enjoying what we've done. Johnny's work and the team's work on the Big Top was just amazing. It really propelled kind of Fright Nights that year. It was such a success and their energy was always so infectious. The reason we changed the 2016 maze to 2017 is because it changed from 2015 to 2016. Mm. And why would you stop? 
while well, you know they, you're, you're never going to create the perfect mate so just keep going keep trying i think the whole concept of big top was the craziness yeah. that's what people enjoyed i mean you don't want to go and do the same maze again yeah and to change it up meant to bring new life to it so i think it got to january 2017 early january yeah and took a bit of paper took the old layout and just scribbled over the top of it basically okay okay this is what we're doing so produced that digitally made a 3d render of it and then uh yeah we just sat around the table about april may and go yeah this will work that was it by may it was ready to go and then we just had to start building it in that summer, way, it's that summer yeah so in, beginning of september i think yeah it so, was it was a risk definitely but i think because of the success we'd had of 2016 we knew that almost we'd created this thing that was people were talking about it so people were ex they were excited for it to return yeah i mean 2015 started out in a position where it was difficult to to get people excited yeah. 2016 just became this fantastic maze fun exciting and completely different people were queuing up for it thinking i hope it's not like last year yeah but in 2017 they were queuing up for it thinking i hope it is like last, last year and it but it wasn't <laughs> it was new again and so we knew that although it needed to kind of keep the essence of what we've done the year before so the soundtrack obviously stayed the same mm -hmm. and we'd kept the tent as it was etc we knew that we could do better so we knew that there were things yeah. that we could do to improve on it big top has that ability it's not um it's not like built in a barn you know it's not a solid maze that's there no, all yeah. year round you know you're gonna have to rebuild it anyway so why not change it when you rebuild it why not come mm. back and go right that didn't work let's swap that out with this yeah. you know even when, at the end of 17 you know we were talking about the changes that we were going to make for 18. You know, so you had all of those sort of things that every part of it you think, well, that didn't work, change that, do this, mm. that. And you get, you're afforded that opportunity by the fact that it's in a tent that only appears in August. So you have to rebuild it anyway. I felt like we wanted to take 2017's version and pick on the um, positives of other mazes. So like Cabin had that like multi-route kind of feel to it. So it's like re-rideable in a way. You can go through it many times and see different rooms. I mean, 2016 was, five rooms plus two corridors. 2017 was 15 rooms plus four corridors. So it was a mm. massive, massive. I think that the constricting people into smaller spaces and, and trying to split them up is something that works so well in, yeah. in a carnival-esque escape room, the whole mirror maze thing. It didn't work out as well as we wanted it to, the mirror maze, it became more of a mirrored section. It wasn't a maze as yeah. such, but that's just down to limitations on time. There was one room in Big Top 2017 that no one really saw, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It was a UV the corridor. UV corridor. Like, no one really saw it. You could easily miss it, but it was there. Plus it was the corridor that I don't think anyone ever found. <laughs> <laughs> the secret corridor the secret that no one ever went down. Down. Yeah. <laughs> painting and it was outrageous wasn't it it was just plastered with <laughs> uv paint everywhere it was just ridiculous but yeah so many people didn't even great. see it but it was great when people I did have a photo of it that's how <laughs> yeah like that's one. how elusive it was <laughs> what i loved about the 2017 version i wasn't here on park what i did come and visit was that they had the do not open clowns inside which was a nod to the walking dead so it was you of the walking dead that year so the 2017 version i would say was definitely a bigger success um the people coming out like mad that we changed it in a good way yeah. oh god thank god this year that is sick 110 percent improvement from last year oh my god just come out of the reimagined once again big thought and oh my god last year we thought it couldn't get any better but oh my god that was Holy insane the layout has changed oh my so gosh, much. The Big Top's a lot bigger this year and that was a fantastic experience. Big Top was even better than last year this time. 10 out of 10, that was the best maze I've ever done. I was worried that that was not going to get any better than next year. Than this, last year, sorry. That was absolutely insane. Oh my God. I would say 2017 Big Top was its best year. I think um, everything just sort of clicked into place. All of the actors sort of learnt their, learnt the maze and learnt the rat runs and everything and were able to move and with the sort of fluid motion of the team, they were able to constantly scare people and change up the dynamic every single time. Work out what works, what didn't. And that sort of carried through, didn't it? And the... Yeah, 2017, I think, it, it peaked. It was kind of that, yeah. that learning process that we had already done from the 16. We had a great show captain, Jason Sody and he brought all the actors together to use the, the, the space and much better 
and then the space that we provided for them was a lot more fun. We had a lot of the, of the fans going through five, yeah. six times in the night just because it was, it was something different every time. <laughs> So we're at the farm, so the farm closed for guests in 2006 and it's been an off uh, restricted area to guests uh, since then but it's been a place where we can store some of our products and some of our mazes or pre-existing attractions. I was just saying in the car that um, when I watched your video and, we, and you saw this, I found out from your video and then I sent it to Johnny, he found out from me watching your video. We were like, what? We were like, oh my God. I think it was Kieran that just looked over yeah. that wall and it was like, that's the big top. <laughs> Kieran managed to spot this, which was a bit mad. Um, here it is right now. So yeah, as you can see there, Carlos the Clown, the big like clown statue that used to be the entrance to the Big Top, is just lying on the ground over there. Yeah, I mean this is where all the all the mazes have come to rest. You know, you've yeah. got, you got uh, Asylum in there. You've got uh, you've got probably um, Bloody Lots Valentine person, over the back. Yeah. You've got uh, Hellgate, Hellgate, Hellgate over there, freezer yeah. in there. But yeah, it's an amazing place. We used to come up here when we were building the maze and, and basically just beg, steal, and borrow, didn't we? Yeah. Just drive up in a in a in our gator with a trailer on the back, see what we could find. So there was all sorts of stuff up here. We'd go into some of the barns yeah. and just, just find stuff that we thought would work well. Chuck it on the trailer and drive it on park. Yeah. We love Cloudhead. We love Cloudhead. <laughs> Another version of the Big Top was there to supersede 2017's version. Uh, but it never came to be. Come about. The ideas for 18 were exciting, but there was nothing ever concrete enough to say let's do it and no one ever did it. So you left November, joining left November um, and then in the winter I just got a bit bored. I thought oh, I'd just try and fix the issues we had in 2017 because there's always issues in every every major do I think. Um, so yeah I just kind of started drawing some things and you know, sadly I left as well. <laughs> so no fault of Thought Park, it just down to the, the circumstances of that year it just never came into fruition, did it? it was, no. Yes, Big Top's a staple idea, it works. We'll leave it. It's going to come back, it's fine. We'll do it later. And later never comes. We couldn't, as far as I know from a business point of view, bring the attraction back. But also say we can't bring the characters and the storyline back. So that's where Big Top Showtime came from. It is Showtime! What the <laughs> Oh my God! Kind of taking the story of the Big Top but just delivering it in a different model so we weren't trying to recreate the maze but we were just bringing the characters out of the Big Top so if you think of 2015 as the prequel to the Big Top to 2016-2017, Big Top Showtime is the spin-off. I actually never got to go through Big Top Showtime but uh, I think Jay did. Yeah I did yeah, yeah it was good, very nice, very nice. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah not quite. Not quite the same as a maze. <laughs> it, it, it's difficult to have a, a mini version of something that was successful because you're always comparing it to the main event. It's never, never going to be the same thing. Yeah. It was a difficult, difficult boost for it to fill. And I think people were then judging Showtime because there was no big top, whereas actually Showtime itself was actually quite a good thing. Mm. It would have just been better together. Yes, I think it was a success. I've only ever heard good things about Big Top Showtime. <laughs> I don't know what's going to top that right now. <laughs> I don't know, but that was so good. That distraction scare. Yeah. She literally got me. I'm like crying. <laughs> Those clowns are very um, energetic. They're very energetic. <laughs> wow, fantastic. My highlight of tonight was uh, Roma's. In the past, like years ago, we seen Roma's at Thought, but this not year... not really done much. Yeah, like this year, it's been taken to a whole new level. So we have just had our first experience of the roaming clowns from Big Top Showtime. Wow, that was intense, man, already. That's the best Romans I've ever seen. Jeez, I think I agree. I think being down here at the farm again is, is one of those things where you're looking at you're looking at everything and it, it does bring back memories. It is weird to see the heads sort of just like this. I think 
yeah, w I remember quite vividly coming onto park every day that we operated Friday nights and seeing it up outside our, our, our tent basically and knowing what was inside. I feel like we've uncovered like an artifact that's been buried away for the last couple of years and it just does bring so so many good memories back and see it's obviously sad seeing, seeing it here just kind of this is part of something that was massive for our past and also for so many of our fans as well but also nice that he's here um, and that it hasn't been taken away or destroyed. I mean, I've worked on a few mazes. I've worked on Bloody Valentine, Parts of Containment, Big Top, Platform 15. I've, I've, I've been around quite a few of these mazes. It was the best maze that I've worked on. It was the best experience for me personally, and I would say the best reviewed maze, or the, the best response. I personally would consider Big Top one of the best mazes in Friday Nights, because, I mean, I've been coming to Friday Nights for years, so I remember the Asylum, I remember freezer you know i remember all of those iconic kind of previous mazes and i remember the again the simplicity of them yeah. just how even cabin though, that was iconic yeah, in its own absolutely. way like, just yeah, again just the free flow freedom, yeah the ability to kind of go any any different way and just just simple and i think because of because we knew we wanted to take all of those essences of all those mazes and put them into this one maze i think yeah i think realistically it, yeah one of the best you've got to set up I feel like it replaced the asylum in the lineup in terms of intensity and uh, having that chainsaw gag at the end where we don't have the big top at the moment, that's where Creek Freak replaced that. So I feel like it went asylum, big top, Creek Freak in terms of like pick the mazes that people talk about all the time and we just got the chemistry right. What I loved most about big top was that very different aspect to a horror maze that I've, I've not seen really again is the Mm. You know, it, it doesn't have to be scary. You can be you're made to jump and have fun. You know, so it kind of appeal. Even though I don't know, yeah. it, it just I've not seen that Kindle again. But I, I, yeah, it, it was the best. That it was excitement rather than anguish, wasn't it? The, the, the whole concept was it yeah. was it would pump the adrenaline rather than you know create that flight of fright. Yeah, and that's what I think made it so unique for so many people. Because I think a lot of people who were you know come to Friday nights and stuff like that, they're too scared to go into some of the mazes. But Big Top, they were able to go in and have fun, you know? Mm. And yes, you know, it wasn't, it was scary. It made you jump. But at, at the end of the day, you came yeah. out laughing as well. And I think that's what made it special. I think that it does sit up there with some of the greatest mazes and some of the best that we've, we've had feedback and some of the best that we've worked on and have enjoyed building. Like talking today with, with the tech team who built it, there's so much passion when they talk about it still. It's been three years since it was here, but there's so much there still. And they could probably, if I told them they had to build it again, go out and think of nine new rooms and a new different route and they'll just pick up and they're still passionate about it which is really lovely to see. Okay and my final question, <laughs> do you think we'll ever see the Big Top return? Will the Big Top return? What do you think? Well they got it out so you know they must be doing something with it I think. You can't um, just be leaving it there in the sun. Um, do we think Big Top returns? Oh, do you think that we'll ever see the Big Top return? Do we think we'll ever see the Big Top return? That's a really, really good question. Nearly, you know, five years since Big Top was here. And I think the fact that it hasn't returned in that time is just quite, like, it's weirdly special in a way, because it's almost as if if it was rebuilt, visitors would be expecting what, what, what they had in 2017, if not better, bigger, I don't know. And I think there's now almost such a, such a stigma around being able to build it in that way, that it's almost like, just leave it as it was. I think it's big boots to fill and it's probably not worth the risk. Yeah. You're going to bring back something and it's either going to not do as well and going to be compared to its previous years or... Yeah, and even, even if we came back and brought it back, we'd be competing against what is now a legendary yeah. maze. I would love to see Big Top come back. Would, yeah. But I don't think it ever will. I'd hate to see it fail if you yeah. come back. That would be upsetting. I would say no, it's not going to come back. Sometimes everything has, you know, has its last legs, like every 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 concept has its last day and you do have to put some things to bed sometimes in order to save its legacy. However, never say never and there's so many things you can do. So you may see it, uh, you may not. I'm not going to say too much. <laughs>